Hello lovely learners, welcome back to A Life Learn. Today I guess I just wanted to vent a little bit about uh, my struggles with sleeping. I have not slept well in probably about a decade at this point. Um, and as you can see by the title, the main point is to share my experience getting a septoplasty. Uh, to be clear, that procedure is having your septum straightened. This part of your nose, the middle cartilage, is your septum. Um, and so um, through my journey of trying to figure out all my sleep problems, one of the things that I um, was told is that um, <clears throat> the, the beginning of this journey was me doing a sleep study. And in that sleep study, they discovered that I have minor sleep apnea when I sleep on my back. And so it was reasonable to deduce that a potential cause of that apnea was my poor circulation or poor airflow through my nose. Um, so um, ever since I was an infant from an injury um, that was uh, unintentional but happened, um, I have always had a crooked septum and it has kind of just gotten worse with age. It was kind of like an S shape, like, you know, it was, it was, it was not straight. It was not a straight septum. It was not what a septum was supposed to be. Um, the doctor who did it said that um, like there was, you know, some cartilage hanging out the end here. And so he, he cut that off. Um, you can actually see from my older videos that my nose was slightly more crooked. Um, and then, um, he said that there was like, you know, a big chunk on this side that he took out and like a spur, he called it on this side. Um, at the same time, the flow, the airflow is still kind of bad on this side. Like I don't really breathe all that great on the left uh, or right on my right. But um, on the left, it's so clear that it's actually disturbing. And what I mean by that is I spent so many years not breathing right that once this passage got cleared up, it was uncomfortable, the amount of air that I was getting in at first. Uh, it took some adjusting, we'll just say that. Um, so getting the procedure, it turns out there's multiple ways it can be done. Um, thankfully, here in Ontario, it is an elective procedure that's covered by our, our health care, so I didn't have to worry about costs or anything like that. Uh, but it sounds like I got the more expensive procedure, because uh, a friend of mine has gotten it before, and they said that they were kept awake, and it, they just did, like, local freezing to do the procedure. But they said, that be, as a result, <laughs> it was very traumatizing for them because they were wide awake as the doctor was, like, digging all up in their nose and, like, taking chunks out. Um, I can only imagine. Uh, whereas I was put to sleep um, and so grateful because I've had enough trauma, <laughs> honestly. Um, although there is, like, definitely a lot of anxiety around like getting ready for the procedure because they like you're still awake when you get put on the um operating table right and then they're like they started strapping me down where they like strapped my legs down and then they had my arms out and they strapped my arms down and I was like this feels uncomfortable and odd and weird and I've never had this before with other procedures maybe they just did it after I was asleep I don't know but they were like yeah we just do this to avoid any unexpected like limb thrashes and stuff um mm, but anyway um i really appreciate that i was put to sleep because of how awful it sounded for my friend at the same time i've come to learn that anesthesia tends to make me really freaking sick um and i really don't like feeling super nauseous especially after going through a procedure uh, so that sucked that part really sucked um, and then I had to be, I shouldn't say I had to, but I was advised. And so I followed the directions cause I'm not going to go through that kind of suffering and then not heal properly. Um, it was advised to put, uh, or to squirt saline solution up my nose, um, into like the operating area, um, every four hours. So I religiously did that. I had an alarm set for every four hours and, and I was squirting water saline solution so it was like distilled water with this salt that they gave us from the pharmacy uh every four hours it was torturous it sucked even when i was asleep you know i, I had my phone right there to wake me up um it sucked but in the end um like i i do really appreciate that my nose is less crooked and i do really appreciate that i can breathe better unfortunately though it didn't really seem to impact or improve my sleep which is a bummer 
Um, but overall, the experience was okay. Um, it was a week of like intense healing where I had to stay at home. Um, and like, again, it was the full week that I was squirting water at my nose. But by the end of that week, when I had my checkup, he said it looked really good. That's when he took the stints out. That hurts. Just warning. Um, like there's, he's like, there's no real easy way of doing this. He just like reached something up into my nose and snipped it. Cause I guess it was like connected. Um, and then he's like, okay, I'm just going to do this. Cause there's no, there's no easy way. And then he was just like, ah! um, and I was like, ah! and then he did the other one. Blah! And it was just like, oh, that was awful. Okay. But at least they're gone now because the stints sucked. Um, he says he never had anybody tell him this before, but my personal experience with the stints was they were keeping like my passageways open, right? So that they didn't like heal closed because that's a whole nother problem. Um, and so in the middle of the night, I was getting so much airflow coming through my nasal passage, um, that it would get like ice cold. And I couldn't sleep because I just like, it felt like I had ice cubes sitting underneath my eyes right here. Um, so I had to like get a rag. Like I have these rags that I have from some old material. I use them as um, napkins and I would just like lay them on my face like that. <laughs> and that's how I slept because I didn't, I, the cold was so intense that it was keeping me awake and I could not fall asleep with, with how cold my sinuses and my nose felt. So that, that sucked. Um, you know, don't recommend, but on the grand scheme of things, it was only one week and it was livable. And then after a full month of healing, or maybe it was two months was my follow-up. I can't remember, but there was like another follow-up and he was like, oh yeah, looking all great. Looking, uh, you know, you, you've done good with the healing and I can see that it got much more breathing passage there. And I asked him though, I was like, well, did you do anything with the right side? Cause it still feels pretty clogged. He's like, no, I remember like taking a spur out there at the top. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes we just don't have full success. So the fact that the one side is cleared out is a really great turnout in the end, like outcome or whatever. And I was just like, okay, I guess, but my sleep's still not better. <laughs> um, people get the procedure for multiple reasons though. Um, originally I had been looking into it just because this crookedness of my nose really bugged me. And my doctor was like, I don't think it's worth the anesthesia because you can die from anesthesia. It's, it's true. Mistakes happen. Um, and, and allergic reactions and stuff like that. So I, I, you know, backed away from the idea, but then when I learned that it could improve my sleep, I was like, okay, no, that feels worth it. So yeah, admittedly, I'm kind of bummed that it didn't improve my sleep. And so just to like back up, I've done the sleep study, right? They determined the minor sleep apnea. I've, I've also done sleep therapy where I like sat with a therapist, paid her way too much for my income, um, for f six sessions. I think it was, it was between four and six sessions, um, where like I was doing a sleep journal to help her figure out like what was going on. And then she was giving me advice on like my sleep hygiene and how to improve my sleep hygiene. So I've done a lot of work on this. <laughs> I have. I've done therapies. I've done pre medical procedures. I'm even like, I do rely on a sleep aid once a week because I need at least one night a week where I kind of sleep. Um, but I don't want to use it every single night because I don't want to be addicted or dependent. Right. Um, but like, I am obsessive about my sleep hygiene. I do not sleep with my phone by me uh, on a regular basis. That time with the septum or septoplasty healing, that was just so I could wake up every four hours to squirt water in my nose. Otherwise, I stop touching my phone an hour before I go to bed and then I read. I don't use my phone as an alarm clock. I have an actual alarm clock uh, from the 90s, one of those Nickelodeon ones. Um, <clears throat> you know, like, I sleep in a cool room. I don't do anything on my bed except sleep. Um, the big point, the big thing of, of advice that the therapist gave me that was actually kind of helpful was... Um, if you can't sleep through the night, it's actually really bad for your sleep hygiene to stay in bed and lay there. Um, it's more helpful to get up once you realize you're awake so that you don't build the association that bed is for laying awake. Um, but when, it, when it's been years of having to get up in the middle of the night 
because you can't sleep through the night and you need to like get up and mentally reset in order to fall back asleep, you get kind of freaking tired of having to get up. Literally tired of being tired. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I cannot remember the last time I slept through the night and woke up feeling rested. I do not remember at all. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I've been, I've done a lot of different things to try and address this. Um, I still am very obsessive about my sleep hygiene um, and I, I keep a very strict routine. I, um, I try to get out of bed when I realize I'm awake, but it's, it often takes me upwards of an hour because I'm also sleeping in a cool room, which means I'm getting out of my nice warm bed into a cold room, blah, which is cold and hard on my pain, in order to go and like read or do something to mentally reset so that I can go back to sleep when I just I just want to sleep. I just want to sleep through the frickin' night. And like, I know that no one fully sleeps through a night. Technically, we all always wake up out of REM, but you don't remember waking up because a good sleep keeps you like really so low in your consciousness that you just kind of come a little bit, dip, dip just out of REM, and then you dip right back in. Like that's a usual person. Whereas I come out of REM, and then I just sort of float there and then I just like float towards consciousness. And then there's just being conscious until I get up out of bed. And I am, I am just so sick of it. I want to sleep. I want to sleep through the night. Um, so yeah, that's this video. That was my experience with the septoplasty procedure, getting my septum straightened. Um, wasn't too bad. Overall, as an experience. I've had worse procedures. Um, I do recommend it if your nose is noticeably crooked um, or like if you have trouble breathing through your nose, a septoplasty makes a huge difference. I can now eat food with my mouth closed and I know that sounds stupid, but like I basically eating, if it was a big meal or like a big mouthful was a, a practice of holding my breath in the past. <laughs> so it's nice to be able to eat now um, through and like breathe through my nose or like, you know, play around in the water and actually like I can float around here and breathe through my nose. You know what I'm saying? Like things that other people really take for granted because I just could not breathe through my nose before. So I do recommend the procedure if that's your situation. I don't know if I recommend it if you're taking the same approach as me as trying to approach like and address sleep apnea. It didn't make that much of a difference for me. I'm sure my sleep apnea is better. Like I probably don't have as much as I did when I did the sleep study, um, sleeping on my back because I just breathe better. But my sleep is still crap. <laughs> um, I suspect it's my anxiety, but I don't know, obviously, for sure. I'm thinking of maybe going to the doctor again to see if we can, like, look into other things, but I just feel like I've done everything. Um, so, yeah, this was kind of a vent video, to be completely honest. Thanks for listening. I'm feeling frustrated because I don't sleep, and I have done so many things to try and address it. Um, and again, I am religious about my sleep hygiene, so that's definitely not the cause, but anyway, it is what it is. <laughs> if you can relate, um, if you've ever had issues with your sleep hygiene, if you've ever had a septoplasty a procedure, um, if you've ever done a sleep study, if you've ever done sleep therapy, um, if you're struggling, if you know anyone who's struggling, or if you just get great sleep and maybe you have some ideas about why your sleep is good, Please do feel free to always share in the comments because I'm all ears. I'm all up for suggestions. I'm so frustrated with this situation. And as always, do join me again next week or sometime soon where I try again to share a little something I've learned or experienced in life.